23rd Sunday after Pentecost, morning meditation, November 8th, 2020. Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choices Teacher in Moral Theology. Act of Faith in the Presence of God, Nomen Apatri, Spirit Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Most Holy, Adorable, and Undivided Trinity, One God and Three Persons, <clears throat> I believe that Thou art here present. I adore Thee with the deepest humility, and render to Thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to Thy Sovereign Majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for Thy servant here. O Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my Mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility, O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being stolen, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. <clears throat> that others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire that in the opinion of the world others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire that others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire that others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire that others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire that others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our morning meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever virgin. Ave Maria, gratia, pana dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus. Benedictus fructus ventris tu iubis. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, or nobis peccatoribus. Nilcini hor mortis. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and shall be created, and shall be near the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful. By the light of the Holy Ghost, grant that same spirit, that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. In Christ, our Lord. Amen. Morning Meditation. Patience in Sickness. Patience in the time of sickness is the touchstone by which the spirit of a Christian is proved to be pure gold or only alloy. Some are patient, devout, cheerful, as long as they enjoy good health. But when visited by some illness, they commit a thousand faults. The gold is found to be only base metal. We must practice patience in the time of sickness. This is the touchstone by which the spirit of a Christian is proved to be pure gold or only alloy. Some are patient, devout, cheerful, as long as they enjoy health, but when visited by some illness, they commit a thousand defects. They appear to be inconsolable. They are impatient with all, even with the person who attends them through charity. They complain of every pain or inconvenience they suffer. They complain of everybody and everything, saying that they are treated with neglect and inattention. The gold is found to be base metal. But such a person may say, I suffer so much. I, and can I not even complain or tell what I endure? You're not forbidden to make known your pains when they are severe. 
But when they are trifling, it is a weakness to complain of them at all, and to seek sympathy and compassion from everyone who visits you. And, and should the remedies prescribed not remove your pains, you should not yield to impatience under them, but resign yourself in peace to the will of God. Another may say, where has charity gone? See how I am forgotten and abandoned my bed of sickness. I pity you, not on account of your bodily infirmities, but on account of your want of patience under them, which makes you doubly sick in body and soul. You are forgotten, but you have forgotten Jesus Christ, who died abandoned for your sake on the cross. And what profit do you derive from complaining? Complain of yourself because you have but little love for Jesus Christ, and therefore have so little patience. St. Joseph Palestinius used to say, quote, If the sick had patience, there would be no more complaints. Unquote. Salvian writes that there are many persons who, had they good health, would not be saints. With regard to saintly women, we know from their published lives that they were almost all continually afflicted various infirmities. For 40 years, St. Teresa was not free from pain for a single day. Someone will say, I do not refuse to accept sickness, but I regret that on account of my infirmities, I'm not able to go to communion or to make mental prayer, and I am burdened to all. Allow me to answer all these excuses one by one. Tell me, why do you wish to go to church in order to communicate? Is it not to please God? Well, but if it be God's will and pleasure that you are not able to go to church to communicate, but that you are to remain in bed to suffer, why should you be troubled? Blessed John of Avila wrote to a priest laboring under sickness, quote, friend, do not stop to examine what, would, what you would do if you had help, but be content to remain sick as long as it shall please God. If you seek the will of God, it matters not whether you are in sickness or in health. St. Francis de Sales has even said that, quote, we serve God better by sufferings than by works, unquote. You say that in sickness you cannot make mental prayer. And why can you not? I grant that you cannot apply the mind to reflection, but why can you not look at the crucifix and offer to your crucified Savior the pains you suffer? And what prayer can be better than to suffer and to resign yourself to the divine will uniting your sufferings to those of Jesus Christ, and presenting them to God in union with the sufferings of his Son. You say that in sickness you are useless and a burden, but as you conform yourself to the divine will, so you ought to suppose that others also conform to it, when they see that you are a burden, not through your own fault, but by the will of God. Ah, such desires and complaints spring not from the love of God, but from self-love. But we would want to serve the Lord not in the manner that pleases Him, but in the way that is agreeable to ourselves. Spiritual reading, Holy Humility, Patience and Bearing Contempt. Saints have been made saints by a pause and honors. No, excuse me. The saints have not been made saints by a pause and honors, but by injuries and insults. St. Ignatius Martyr, a saintly bishop who won universal esteem and veneration, was sent to Rome as a criminal, and on his way experienced from the soldiers who conducted him nothing but the most barbarous insolence. In the midst of his suffering and humiliations, he joyfully exclaimed, quote, I now begin to be a disciple of Christ, unquote. I now begin to be a true disciple of my Jesus, who endured so many ignominies for my sake. St. Francis Borgia, when traveling, slept one night in the same room with his companion. Father Bustemi, who, in consequence of his severe attack of asthma, coughed much, casting spittle unconsciously on the saint, frequently on his face. In the morning, Father Bustemi perceived what he had done, was greatly afflicted, having given so much cause of pain. To the saint. Father, said St. Francis, be not disturbed, for there was no part of this room so fit for the reception of spittle as my face. Standing once before the crucifix, Blessed Mary of the Incarnation 
said to her sisters in religion, quote, Is it possible, dear sisters, that we refuse to embrace contempt when we see Jesus Christ reviled and scoffed at? Unquote. A certain holy religious, having been insulted, went before the Blessed Sacrament and said, Lord, I am very poor. I have nothing to present to thee, but I offer thee the injury that I have just received. Oh, how lovingly does Jesus Christ embrace all who embrace contempt for his sake. He soon consoles and enriches them with his graces. Father Anthony Torres was once unjustly charged with disseminating false doctrines and in punishment of his supposed transgression was for many years deprived of faculties to hear confessions. But in a letter to a certain friend, he says, quote, be assured that during the whole time I was calumniated, the spiritual consolations that the Lord gave me surpassed any I ever received from him, Unquote. To suffer contempt with a serene countenance not only merits a great reward, but also serves to draw others to God. Quote, he, says St. John Chrysostom, who is meek, is useful to himself and others. For nothing is more edifying to a neighbor than the meekness of a man who receives injuries with a tranquil confidence. Father Maffey relates that a Jesuit father, while preaching in Japan, having been spat upon by an insolent bystander, removed the spittle with his handkerchief and continued the sermon as if nothing had happened. One of his auditors exclaimed that a doctrine that teaches such humility must be true and divine. It was instantly converted to the faith. Thus also St. Francis de Sales converted innumerable heretics by his meekness in bearing the insults he received from them. We have a shining example of the same forbearance recorded of one of the canonized children of St. Alphonsus' own congregation. This is a side note from the editor, by the way. <clears throat> St. Clement Mary Hofbarg Bauer. Clement entered the Redemptorist congregation in Rome in 1784, St. Alphonsus, then in extreme old age, sent him encouragement and his blessings. Father Clement became afterwards the Apostle of Warsaw and Vienna, and the renowned propagator of the Redemptorist congregations north of the Alps. The story is recorded that while the saint was one day begging for his poor in Warsaw, he requested an alms of a man sitting at an inn. The man sprang up, and after heaping abuse on Father Clement, spat in his face. The priest wiped away the spittle and said, quote, That was for myself. Give me now, please, something for the orphans. Unquote. The man was astonished at the gentleness of the saint, as well he might, and gave him generous alms for the poor. He afterwards went to confession to Father Clement and changed his life. <clears throat> Continuation of St. Alphonsus' writings. Let us be persuaded that to be persecuted in this life is the highest glory of the saints. Quote, and, says the apostle, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3.12 The Redeemer says, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. John 15, verse 20. Some will say, I attend to my own business. I give offense to no one. Why should I be persecuted? But all the saints have been persecuted. Jesus Christ, the head of the saints, has been persecuted. And you will not submit to persecution? What greater favor, says St. Teresa, can God bestow upon us than to send us the same treatment? He wished his beloved son to suffer on this earth. Quote, believe me, says Father Torres, in a letter to one of his penitents, that one of the greatest graces that God can confer upon you is to make you worthy to be culminated by all, without being esteemed by any. Unquote. When then you see yourself disregarded and despised, rejoice and thank Jesus Christ, who wishes you to be treated in the same manner in which he himself was treated in this life. And to prepare your soul to accept humiliations when they occur, represent to yourself in the time of your meditation all the contempt, contradictions, and persecutions which may happen to you, and offer yourself with a strong desire and resolution to suffer them all for the sake of Jesus Christ, and thus you will be better prepared to accept them. You must not only accept humiliations in peace, but must also be glad and exult under them. The Venerable Louis de Ponte could not at first conceive how his soul would delight in contempt. 
when he became more perfect, he experienced joy in abjection. But our own strength, we certainly cannot rejoice in humiliations. But by the aid of Jesus Christ, we can imitate the apostles who, quote, went from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer reproach for the name of Jesus. Acts 5, 41. There are some, as St. Joseph Callus Denasius says, who suffer reproach, but not with joy. To teach the perfect spirit of humility to St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, St. Ignatius came down from heaven and assured her that true humility consists in taking pleasure in whatever inspires self-contempt. Worldlings do not delight as much in honors as the saints do in contempt. Brother Juniper of the Order of St. Francis received insults as he would the most costly gems. When derided by his companions, St. John Francis Regis was not only pleased with their ridicule, but even encouraged it. Thus, from the lives of the saints, it would appear that sufferings and humiliations were the sole objects of their wishes. With a cross on his shoulder and a crown of thorns on his head, the Redeemer once appeared to St. John on the cross and said, quote, John, ask of me what thou wilt. Unquote. Quote, Lord, replied the saint, I desire to suffer and to be despised for thy sake. Lord, seeing thee oppressed with sorrows and saturated with opprobrium, for the love of me, what can I ask from thee but pains and ignominies? The Lord once assured St. Angela of Fongelino that the surest means by which a soul can ascertain whether its lights are from God is to examine if they inspired and left behind a strong desire of being despised for his sake. Jesus wishes that under injuries and persecutions, we not only be not disquieted, but that we even rejoice and exult in expectation of the great glory that he has prepared for us in heaven as the reward of our suffering. Quote, blessed are ye when they shall revile you and persecute you. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward is very great in heaven. Matthew 5, verse 11 to 12. Those who are about to enter religion it is my custom to recommend, above all things, the practice of obedience and of patience under contempt. I have been anxious to treat the latter at full length because I am convinced that, without bearing contempt, it is impossible for anyone to advance in perfection. Because I hold as certain that the religious who cheerfully embrace humiliations will become a saint. Quote, he that is humble of heart, says St. Paulinus, is the heart of Christ. Humilius corde, cor Christis est. He who is humble of heart or who delights in contempt is transformed into the heart of Jesus Christ. Be assured then that if you are to be a saint, you must suffer humiliations and contempt. Though all your companions were saints, you will, notwithstanding, by the ordination of God, meet with frequent contradictions. You will be frequently put below others, held in little esteem, will have to submit to accusations and reproofs. To render you, you like himself, Jesus Christ will easily find the means of making you an object of contempt. Hence I entreat you to practice every day the beautiful advice of Father Torres to his penitents. Quote, say every day a pater and an ave in honor of the life and ignominy of Jesus to offer yourself to suffer, not only in peace, but even with joy, for the love of him, all for all the contradictions and reproaches which he will send you, begging always he assists his assistance to be faithful to him, and bearing patiently all injuries and humiliations. Concluding prayer, I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O Trying God, keep my resolutions and keep them well. For the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou 
as hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay? That thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I have been, even until now. No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance in thy holy love, I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory, and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. In nomen patria fili, spiritu sancti, amen. Have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.